Ever since I talked about Neurovisor earlier this year, I've been getting a ton of questions about the comparison of the Neurovisor to other light and sound devices on the market. One of the original and most well-known devices out there over the past 10 years is BrainTap, which claims to use light and sound to entrain your brain into different brainwave patterns that help you relax, change your habits, or even visualize and manifest your future. In contrast, we have the Neurovisor, which takes a different approach. Rather than entrain your brain into single brainwave frequency targets like BrainTap does, the Neurovisor is instead designed to engage your brain with a bunch of different geometric patterns of photic stimulation. So on one side, we have BrainTap, which I think stabilizes a single brainwave state versus the Neurovisor, which encourages more brain flexibility by increasing the frequency and degree of change in different brainwave states within a single training session. So really, it's more of a brain workout in my opinion. I have to admit, I haven't always been so enthusiastic about light and sound devices, but I've seen some really interesting research coming out of MIT this year that suggests that light stimulation actually physically does something to your brain to improve your performance and brain longevity. So the research would suggest that not only are you getting an entertaining light show and felt changes in your brainwave state, but you actually might be improving the longevity of your brain by engaging in these exercises. In this video, I'll compare the BrainTap headphones to the Neurovisor LED pod in cost, science, and my own personal experiences when doing the training sessions. I first tried BrainTap around 2017, and I really enjoyed the experience. It definitely makes you feel different towards the end of the session. And I've been using it quite a bit in the last month to refresh my memory of how I felt after the stimulation sessions. And the best way that I can describe the BrainTap experience at this point is that it sort of puts you into a hypnotic trance. Response in the exact same way. So simply go with the flow and begin the process of letting go as your mind begins to come. It has binaural beat patterns and visual stimulation that train your brain into targeted brainwave frequencies. Throughout the audio tracks, it's normally Dr. Patrick Porter's voice that tells you to release a bunch of tension, be present in the moment, and how to heal from traumatic experiences in the past. I'll talk about this more, but the brain tap really strikes me as a device that you would want to use if you're trying to heal from trauma in the past. But there's some nuances there that the Neurovisor could be more effective at, so I'll go down that rabbit hole as the video progresses. My initial thoughts are that I just don't want to sit there getting subliminal programming from this voice that goes all throughout the session, and what I really Really liked about the Neurovisor is that it just has the music and light stimulation so that it frees up your mind to think about different things rather than being in that hypnotic trance with that subliminal messaging from Dr. Porter. With Neurovisor, you can just sit back and enjoy the flashing light patterns and all the beautiful geometry that comes from the stimulation. Whereas with BrainTap, you really are sitting there listening to someone talk for the entire session. And back when I first tried it, I was really getting into Kriya Yoga meditation techniques and neurofeedback. So I didn't feel like I want to sit there being hypnotized and I sort of let it fall to the wayside. I've been following along with BrainTap over the years, but it's not something that I wanted to pick up and use all the time. Then around 2022, I tried the Roxiva lamp, which to me was a totally new and unique experience of flashing lights, geometric patterns, and almost like a psychedelic experience during the sessions. I found with the Roxiva lamp, I really wanted to share it with friends because of how entertaining the geometric patterns were. And that was in sharp contrast to the brain tap that I didn't really want to share with anybody unless that they were more comfortable with audiovisual stimulation and the idea of being hypnotized during the sessions. The problem with Roxiva is that lamp came in at about $5,000 each. So I had it on rental, had to give it back, and it wasn't something I could share with a bunch of people. Finally, in 2024, came along Neurovisor. And when I initially tried Neurovisor, I was like, wow, this is really similar to the Roxiva experience for one-tenth the price. And because I had it for a longer period of time, I was able to experiment with it more. So I tracked my brain waves using the Muse headband while using the Neurovisor, fed that information into ChatGPT and talked to some experts experts and found some really interesting data on what it's actually doing to my brain when I use it. But first of all, let's take a look at the tech specs of these two different devices and see how they compare. Now, BrainTap has eight blue LEDs on the visor that go in front of your eyes. They also have 10 blue and eight red LEDs that go on the earphones that are supposed to do some sort of auricular light stimulation. They say on the website, it's supposed to work like acupuncture. 
you've probably seen people get acupuncture on the ears, and I've done that too and noticed actually a pretty profound change, surprisingly. And brain tap is supposed to increase energy to the ears with that photic stimulation. It's hard for me to tell if the ear stimulation is adding to the overall experience. The device actually does put me into a deep state of relaxation, but I'm not sure how much the ear lights have to do with that. Because if the ear lights aren't doing much, I would have rather them put the money into making the device a little bit more comfortable or the light show being more entertaining. But I suppose this model has worked for them for the past 10 years. Neurovisor, in contrast, has nine white neutral LED lights on the pod, which magnetically sticks to the strap. These Neurovisor LEDs have a much stronger light effect and light patterns than the blue LEDs of the brain tap. With the brain tap, you see a little bit of flickering with your eyes closed, but with the Neurovisor, it's this whole geometric show of swirling and pulling you in and zooming out. It can actually be a little intense. The music of the Neurovisor is great too, and it really adds to the whole experience. They say the geometric patterns have macro, meso, and micro light pattern effects. I've had a couple of conversations with their founder, Garnett, and you wouldn't believe the amount of depth of research he's done into not only understanding the strobing light effects on the brain, but what it actually means for consciousness itself in relation to neural criticality, which is the balance between the organization and entropy of kinetic brain networks. As a result, the makers of Neurovisor are really into creating flexible brain states by engaging the brain with a lot of different light patterns that take neural criticality into account. The weight of Neurovisor is 225 grams. The weight of BrainTap is a little heavier at 300 grams. I like how they made the Neurovisor pod very lightweight so it doesn't pull on the strap when you're wearing it. It's very comfortable to wear. I'd say the negative of that is they weren't able to put in a big battery in the pod, so I need to recharge it about every four sessions. I'd rather do that than have a heavy battery in the pod that made it uncomfortable to wear. The BrainTap, I'm sorry to say this, but it is not that comfortable. I find it hard to get the visor all the way down around my eyes at times, and I don't like how the ear pads sit on your ears. After wearing something like the Neurable MW75s for the past year, I've gotten really spoiled with headphones. They are just so comfortable and go over your ears. It just makes me realize that the BrainTap headphones push on your ears as this pressure and heat that really doesn't feel comfortable on my ears towards the end of a 15, 20 minute brain tap session. Now, some of you out there are probably saying, well, it doesn't matter how comfortable the brain tap is. What matters is the state change that it delivers. And I would agree, I actually feel a lot different after brain tap sessions, but the comfortability of the headphones is actually going to factor in on whether you want to use it or not. So over the years of talking about wearables, that's something that I've really zoomed in on and I really don't find brain tap to be very comfortable to wear. Another thing I don't like about BrainTap is they have that micro USB-C port, which is totally outdated at this point. They need to transition to what Neurovisor is using, which is the USB-C, which is compatible with the new iPhones, for example, and a lot of other Android devices. It just makes it so you don't have to have a bunch of different chargers laying around. BrainTap does have longer battery life. You can get 15 to 20 different audio sessions with one charge. With Neurovisor, I do find that I have to charge about every four sessions, but at least they didn't put a huge battery in there to make it uncomfortable. I love the Neurovisor app. It's really well organized and easy to navigate. The old BrainTap app was really terrible. It was very analog and not easy to navigate. They've made major improvements as of late, so I have to give them props for that. I'd say both are relatively well organized. I hope they don't put too much content in there to overwhelm people with the amount of different trainings, but the variety is nice. And I do have to say both Neurovisor and BrainTap have done a good job of creating curated sets of sessions so that you can go into one set of sessions and try the variety without getting overwhelmed. Now let's take a look at the scientific evidence behind these platforms. BrainTap has published some research on their website but I noticed a lot of the papers are coming out of a place called Quantum University. I like Quantum University as an institution that does scientific exploration of spiritual ideas that are really out there. They're unique in that they try to push the boundaries of what can be discovered. But I have to be honest, they're not exactly known for their scientific rigor. And a lot of papers coming out of Quantum University are not making it into the highly respected peer-reviewed journals. I have to say though, Neurovisor is also lacking in peer-reviewed research. They do have a new paper coming out that shows brainwave variability measurements in several subjects while using the Neurovisor device. And it would be helpful if they continued to do more of that research. But there's a lot of research on stroboscopic lights in general that Neurovisor does that shows that that type of stimulation increases entropy in neuronal firing patterns 
which has been associated with neuroplasticity. It's been theorized that stroboscopic light patterns can reduce the rigidity and thought patterns found in depression and OCD and help open up creativity in thinking from different perspectives by utilizing different brain networks. In that way, it can create a more positive outlook and allow the ability to see things from different perspectives. Because I was really interested in that research, I actually measured my brain waves using the Muse headband while doing the Neurovisor sessions. And then I had ChatGPT take a look at the raw brain waves for analysis. ChatGPT found that I had increased brainwave permutation entropy during a Neurovisor session, which means that there was increased variability in my brainwaves. And Neurovisor's new paper replicated these results in which they used a 32 electrode EEG cap sampled at 500 samples per second. In their subjects, they found an increase in brain signal variability. Another aspect of this is that there's research coming out of MIT that shows that 40 hertz stimulation, lights flashing at 40 beats a second, has been shown in rat models to reduce plaques and tangles that lead to dementia. There's a spinoff from MIT that is currently going through FDA trials on human subjects. What's amazing is that they are showing improvements in the cognition of their human subjects, which is really exciting because so many of the drugs that have been designed have been big failures in the recent past. With BrainTap, I couldn't see any evidence that they have 40 hertz stimulation in their light patterns. I'm sure it could do it, and there probably are some 40 hertz signal on the device. But what's different about Neurovisor is that they have specific settings for 40 Hertz. You can go into the Neurovisor and stimulate specifically at 40 Hertz. And I know for a fact that a lot of their geometric light pattern stimulation sessions have 40 Hertz stimulation patterns embedded into the signals. Overall, from my experience, the brain tap helps calm me down and inspires me through the hypnotic messaging and puts me into a really relaxed state. It does have a few sessions that just have the light and sound stimulation without any narration, but the majority of the content on the app has the hypnotic narration over the top of it. Neurovisor, in contrast, tends to make me more euphoric during the session, depending on which sessions I choose. And afterwards, it's like my brain is actually tired, like I had a good brain workout. I can recover really quickly after the Neurovisor, but sometimes I need to lay down for a second. As far as experience goes, the light show on Neurovisor is way more entertaining. I also think that the music is better on Neurovisor, and it's kind of nice that I don't have someone talking in my ear like with BrainTap. If I was showing off these devices to members of my family, I'd be hesitant to show them brain tap just because they might be suspicious of the hypnosis aspect of it. But Neurovisor is really entertaining and agnostic, so they can just sit there and enjoy the light show and have a good time. In fact, this summer, I took it to Colorado and showed it to my friend who's an ER doc, who's really into sauna and light therapy and other biohacking, and he loved it. He used it like five times over the course of two days. As far as group settings, it would be nice to have that Roxiva lamp, but it costs $5,000. But the Neurovisor is really easy to trade around if you want to show it to different people. With the current holiday bundles, it's about $500 for the first two years, but they have increased their prices recently, so you have to take a look. I'm just really excited that Alzheimer's research is moving forward. We need alternatives to these drugs that just aren't working very well. And with light stimulation, we have potentially something that's very low potential harm, especially if you don't have any past history of epilepsy or seizures, with big gain potentials. In my opinion, tech like this should get breakthrough FDA status to be working directly with the FDA to speed up research and investigate these matters because the potential upside is huge. Honestly, if I was struggling with memory issues, I would 100% be using this every day. There's no detriment and just the chance that it's actually helping rejuvenate my brain, I think is a huge selling factor. And if I had concerns for dementia in myself, I'd be using red light therapy as well with something like Sensei. Both of these companies have moved towards subscription models. With BrainTap, a one-year subscription bundle without holiday savings would be around $1,156. At the time of this recording, you can get the Neurovisor device with a full first year subscription for $450. Overall, because of the entertaining nature of the light show, the great music, and the modern app, as well as a lower price, Neurovisor is the obvious choice for me that I would want to use to maintain my brain health longevity. As I age, I want to be using these flickering lights at least twice a week to give my brain a workout and potentially activate my brain's immune system so it clears out pro-inflammatory plaques that might be forming over time. 
I think using this along with something like red light therapy will ensure that my mind stays sharp over the years and that my mood and motivation levels stay high. I will say that if you've experienced trauma in the past and you have high levels of anxiety and you're trying to get your nervous system to calm down from fight or flight to rest and relax, as well as rewire your mind to deal with these psychological issues, I think brain tap might be a better choice in that case. That being said, if you have repetitive thought patterns that create depression or OCD, the Neurovisor might be a better choice to open up your brain to be more flexible and see things from different perspectives. It's hard to tell, there's a lot of research that needs to be done, but after being asked on YouTube repeatedly to compare these devices, that's how I see it. If you go on the Neurovisor website, you'll see the black version sold out, but they now have the Neurovisor Blue, which has an even more comfortable strap to wear. There is an affiliate link for Neurovisor below if you wanna get one, it really helps support the channel. And for the reasons I presented in this video, if you do feel like BrainTap is the right choice for you, I'll put a link for that one below as well. And if you wanna see how I did a deep dive on Neurovisor and witness how I <laughs> recorded my brainwaves with the Muse headband while doing Neurovisor sessions and fed that data into ChatGPT, check out this video here and I'll see you on the other side.